Okay, take two. Cut. Quiet on the set. We just made a whole video of like 20 minutes of talking and realized the camera had turned itself off. Ah! 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 Okay, you two will mind. <laughs> okay, go. Um, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Today, my dad, who very wise. Very wise. Very, very wise. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be talking about what helped me and what didn't when it comes to have a plenty childhood and have a plenty young adult life. This video was requested by somebody I forgot your name. So I'm sorry, but thank you for the request. <laughs> okay, so where should we start? Uh, medical. Medical. So, um, yeah, and I have notes here. <sighs> Let's see. We made a little, we were just talking about trying to remember all the stuff that Anna did because she's 20 now. So it's been a long time. Almost 21. Almost 21. Look out. <laughs> oh, geez. So I guess we, I mean, we'll, we'll just kind of do quicker. We're not going to talk a lot of detail, but um, the things that Anna did, like when she was really young, when she was two, she did a dorsal rhizotomy, which Anna will put a link to, I know. And that is an operation on the spine that tries to kind of snip some, snip a handful of select nerves that allows um, the improvement in the spasticity and the tightness of muscles. So that it just hopefully opens up more movement in the legs and, and, and sometimes even has an impact on the arms, which I don't know if they even know why that is, but it does. It did. And for Anna, it did. Um, and I think that that operation for some people is amazing. It can make huge differences for some children with cerebral palsy. For Anna, it made a minor difference, not huge, but it was, I think it allowed her to start crawling, which was at that time a big deal. I don't do it now. No crawling anymore. And then it also opened, I think her left, her right arm was had some more mobility, which was great. So it, it had some positive effects, but not as much as we hoped. Um, but no neg you know, nothing really negative. So that was fine. Um, she did tons of physical therapy, as you can imagine, and, and occupational therapy, and later on speech, speech therapy. And those things were, it's hard to say, sometimes you don't know how much they're helping because you can't really compare it to if you hadn't done it. So some of that stuff seems kind of thankless, um, but I think the reality is it's all worth it to a point. Um, and I think that point is the point at which it becomes something that's just, if you just do so much of it and focus on it too much, it becomes almost an uh, imp impediment to your life. You know, it just, it just if, the, if it's making the child unhappy and it's just becoming like all consuming, that's where some of the therapy and, and treatments and things I think become not worth it. Um, so there's a balance there. I think you have to find it yourself with your doctor. And we talked about, you know, doctors a little bit and, you know, doctors are different. I think um, all of them want the best for the patient, and some of them, some of them are good at sort of finding that balance between let's celebrate what's going well and what's you know what strides we've made, and let's try to make more strides. And then others are more um, about okay, let's do this, let's do this, let's try that, let's try that, let's push, push, push. And our Anna's doctor was more in the second camp, where she really um, she had a research and teaching team, and so she really was tr into trying a lot of new things. And which is great as long as they're safe. And I know she, she believed they were. And, and so she would push us a lot to, to try, try this and try that. And, but everything that we'd have to try was, you know, it was always a lot, of, a lot of effort, a lot of work and all that. So going to the doctor with Anna when she was little for my wife and I was humbling experience and, and kind of upsetting sometimes when we leave just because we just felt like we're not making progress. And, and there's then, always something we weren't doing, you know, <laughs> so. And then it affected me a lot, or medium, I would say. When I'm at older, I was so nervous about uh, that. Nervous about doctors, yeah, because it was always about, you know, doing something that yeah. Anna didn't, you know, wasn't too thrilled about doing. So, again, I think that speaks to the balance of finding a balance with your doctor. And, you know, if, if they're the type that are going to say, oh, we should do this, 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 and this, five different things. Try to maybe try to find what are the top priority things because the other thing we found is you know we tried Botox, which are the shots not, uh, for her legs. Not cosmetic. Not, not the cosmetic. Not to get your uh, face cuter. Um, 
it's a Botox is a substance that that paralyzes muscles, and so it, it it's able to kind of relax, make muscles relax when they aren't relaxing. So they try it on cerebral palsy patients, and we tried it once with Anna. Um, she hates shots so much that it became really difficult to do. Um, we tried Cinemet, which is a another a medication, oral medication you take. And so we tried a number of things, and I think sometimes because there were so many things that we tried, we often didn't give them a full shot, a fair shot, because we were so exhausted from trying things. So sometimes I think, and this is just me talking, I'm not a doctor, but I feel like if you can work with your doctor to find out what, what are the really top priority things, and let's do them right, you know, and, and make a full investment to see if they work. Because I feel like we tried some things and did them sort of halfway, um, and I don't think that's a good way to go. So. Um, what else, Anna? Let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Serial casting, which is uh, not covering me and yeah, yeah. not covering Anna and cereal. It on that one, I think they took her for her foot, and it was trying to um, because when she walk, when you walk on your toes and balls of your feet all the time, this tendon gets real short. It shortens over time, it gets shorter and shorter because it's not being stretched. So what they did is they put her cast her foot in a cast, like let's say at, at the ninety degree angle, like this, for a couple weeks. Then they take the cast off pull her foot this way a little bit, and then cast it this way, and gradually have a long-term stretch of that tendon, so. But if you're not walking. Yeah, if you have to walk, it's kind of a bummer, but it's doable. But that's important, because you don't want that tendon to get so short that it gets damaged or yeah. becomes unworkable. Because um, as, as, you, as you work through physical therapy, you, you're gonna need that, that ability to bend your foot if you can. Anna's never, her, her calves just never have been able to um, do that on their own. So she has braces that hold her foot in a 90 degree angle when she walks. So we haven't made lots of progress, but we've always kept it so it didn't get too short. Um, so you'll find out the things that, that, that work and that are most important over time. Hypotherapy. And then hippotherapy is a good horse example. Therapy. Yeah, horse therapy. Anna's totally yeah. gotten into that, total blast. Not, it's not the type I do now. Oh, but back yeah, back then she was part of a study where they they did um, it was a study to see if if you know riding horses and doing therapy on horses could improve the the core strength and the balance for a child with cerebral palsy. So she had like uh, they put these little sticky dots all over her body. It was really funny. We have a great picture of her with all the sticky dots all over, and then they had cameras all around where she's sitting on this. Was it a fake horse or a real yeah. horse? Fake horse, yeah. and then the, the horse would move, right? It had motors or something. Like yeah. the, the thing moved in, in predictable ways so they could do a study. And as she would ride real horses, they'd every week or two, or maybe it was like in the beginning, they did it before and then they did it after. Yeah. So they did it before with all the dots to see how does, how does her body react to the movement of the horse. Then she'd actually ride real horses for you know a number of weeks, five or 10 weeks. And then they'd do a, get her back into the fake horse with the dots. And, and compare the two and see if it helped um, stabilize her, if she's better, has better trunk strength and better balance and all that. Um, and I think, it, I think it did. I think they had some really positive yeah. results. It's, it's really cool. And now I ride at, well, one, one way I ride is with the pun at my best hand pal. But another, and it still helps me with my balance and it helps with my back pain too. I feel that. But I also ride at a therapeutic writing center that is able to help people with disability do a helpful thing. But, uh, but they also teach you what you would learn at a random equestrian bond, like a two point. Two point. That's when you kind of stand up in the saddle and put your hands on yeah. the neck. You just taught or, me that this morning. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or any. Or anything that you would, you are able to learn it at a therapeutic placement at Bond because they have the resources that have two people walking alongside of you mm -hmm. and a mix. So now I don't do it from a therapy asthma, I do it from mental stability and it's fun. It's fun, yeah. That's the great, the great thing is if you can find things that, that, um, the person with a disability enjoys doing it, and, and it has some benefits too. Those are those are the best. Um, and bicy I met my bicycling. best friend. And you make make great friends. So it's been it's been mm -hmm. kind of a win win win. It's been awesome. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, and then I know you want to talk about 
so now if I guess we get out of the medical stuff a little bit and more into the personal development and now you know as you as you've gotten to be teenager and older now you've gotten a lot of just great times out of connecting with people your own age and a little older and getting into clubs you want to talk about that yeah. a little bit and I would put here um what I into the head of my type I do now definitely into a personal development so you might know not so much but okay but now I'm in raw in an adaptive woman society run by robot LA. The Rolettes. Rolettes LA. With a, a wheelchair dance team. Yes, they're all in wheelchair. And they're a dirt woman who run a mentorship program for a dirt and a teen program as well for a boundless fame society. And basically, you have a mentor and unit top like organizing how often it's body image, um, social media, and branding. But you can pick what you want to work on, if that may help. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can, so Anna could, can really direct and say, hey, I really want to work on public speaking, or I want to work on how do I do graphic design, or I want to work on um, just my confidence or whatever. And they'll, and then they'll help you and, and do things. They have workshops and and one on ones with mentors, and yeah. it's really amazing. It's a great organization. I didn't know anything about it. Anna found it and told me I she was going to do it. I found it through social media. Yeah, and I know you said when I found it through TikTok. You're me. kidding? No, oh, no, yeah, TikTok. Oh yeah. So TikTok did, did actually did something good. Yeah. That's hallelujah. So that's <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. And it's it you pay for it every month. And I when she first told me how much she was going to pay, I was like, wow, really? But now it's a bar. I think it's a bargain. It's been so awesome for Anna, and, and they are they are just the greatest. So we and have, we're really excited about that. We have monthly video, uh, monthly room for monthly what? A uh, video call. Video what? Calls. C A L L. Oh, calls. Yeah, yeah. Video call. Monthly video calls. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can meet other with disability too in the same program. Yeah. How cool is that? So. Just being able to connect with people. Yeah, so being able to connect with people because it's hard. It's hard when the kids are little. I we found it hard to connect with kids with disabilities that have you know that might be sort of in a similar place to Anna. It wasn't that easy. Um, but now that she's old enough to be able to network on her own, she's got tons of you know people that she knows who are needing the needing the same things that she's needing and being interested in the same things that she's interested in, and it's. Pretty awesome, and she's just like off and running and doing this stuff. Social media has changed my life. Yeah, it really has. It really has for all its uh, challenges. Social media has has some great positives for certainly for for kids with disabilities. Not um, young adult. Yeah, yeah, kid. Yeah, you got to be a little older. We're old not enough. talking about parents that run their higher Instagram about their disability. Well, yeah, that's yeah. that's a little different, but that that can be great too because yeah. it involves the kids, right. in and the the disabled person in the whole discussion, and right. so it's that they're different. It just depends on what your issues are, and and um, but you can I think you can get a lot. I guess the older you get, the more you yeah. the more you can pull out of you know kind of reaching out to the world and and seeing what's out there. So Anna's uh, that's been a big deal, I think. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. And what else? walking club. Oh yeah, walking club. She joined a walk. Uh, you joined a club to, yeah. and there's kids in wheelchairs there too. So it's just a and chance down to and down or on to them or that. All that stuff. They go and meet once a week, and it gives yeah, it's a great time to go and be with friends and run into people, and so just a chance to socialize and also maybe get some physical benefit and. And they all will have pushing club, art club, all the different adult with disability recreational club. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, what else? And then, uh, oh, and this pets. one? Pets have been great. Hey, wait, why are you waiting <laughs> me up my neck? Yeah, pets have been great. I and mean, Winnie's a great, she's a real cuddly lap dog, so it's been great for Anna, because she doesn't have to chase Winnie down, and Winnie always wants to be around her. So having a dog has been awesome. And my pets. And the fish are good. 
No, twinnies, no. Yeah, because they don't go anywhere. They're always in the same spot. So you can go over and look at them and yep. take care. Make me take care of them. Make me clean the aquariums. That's always hey, fun for I, you. Hey, I'm the supervise. You supervise. <laughs> She's developing her supervisory I pay, skills. I paid for one. You did pay for it all. That's good. That's good. So uh, anyway, I don't know if we've done anything good here. Hopefully we helped. Just yeah. sharing some of the some of what happened and uh, that's it. Hey, I just video it, you know, someone who has benefited from it. And pause it to you, red button down the middle. Comment, comment anything. Comment who he winning it. Okay, cut. That's it, cut. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I said cut. <laughs> also like this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Take care everybody.